Hey everybody, Nomine here. Hope you're having a good league start. In today's video, we're going to be going over the league mechanic and how I like to play it. I've had great success with it. I haven't really lost a round yet. It seems pretty straightforward to me. So in this video, I'm going to be doing my best to explain that to you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. All right, guys. So basically to access the league mechanic, all you have to do is open your inventory. And usually, you know, as you play through the campaign, you found these items called silver coins. You just right click it and it creates a portal to the hall of the dead so you enter the zone and then you go into the well of passing which basically which basically kills your character right and then you go into the afterlife pretty much and you have all like the ancestors here that you can talk to these are different like you know these are different like bosses or teams that you can fight um in the in the trial so basically you go here this took me a while to find you can talk to all these npcs when you first arrive but you're not going to have any of this currency uh so basically how you purchase items from like you know all the all the different leaders here is basically this this current these favors right here as i'm as i'm hovering over them so you don't have any right now basically you get them from winning rounds and you can see it on the selection screen what you're gonna get for who you fight right so basically it lists the rewards right here right and then the sponsors are basically like the the leaders that are sponsoring the fight so if you win the fight you're going to get, you know, seven, if you win this fight, for example, you get 750 Hitakura tribe tokens, uh, 250 Tukuhama tribes, and then 500 Ramco tribes. So let's just go ahead and, you know, for the sake of this example, let's just kind of pick a fight real quick. We're going to click select opponent, and then we're going to go ahead and place our warriors here. So basically what I like to do, just like in the trailer, I like to explain, I like, there's like flanker positions, there's attackers, and then there's defenders. So I like to have like the animals in like the flanker positions pretty much because they can like sneak over and attack the totems. Um, you can in over here, you can kind of see the enemies uh, configuration. They have like the birds and the defenders and you know, like so on. And then the cold spells from distance. So honored sages, I like to have them in the, um, you know, attackers basically. So, you know, like I, I just like, I just basically put everything down uh, I really don't like to think about it too much, to be honest. Uh, maybe it matters in the later rounds, or maybe it doesn't, but I really haven't had much trouble with it. So I just like to place everybody. I really don't care about people defending. I like to have everybody on offense, because I, I feel it personally helps me out. All right, and once you have everything placed, so you go ahead and just hit the start button. And basically, your objective is to destroy the enemy team's totem here. So as you can see here, of course, we have uh, proximity bubbles here. So this is a unique item, so I have to kind of, you know, get in here and kind of go get a little... Oh, God! Okay, so this is a perfect example to see I've died. So once you die, there's a little bit of a timer. Um, I don't really... You can't really see the timer on your screen. Um, but, you know, you do respawn back at your totem, but uh, you really want to try and not die, essentially. That is that is optimal. And also, you're, you can attack these totems yourself. So as you can see here, I'm like attacking these totems here and my teammates are kind of helping me. So there we go. So now one of the totems is destroyed. Basically the um, the enemies spawn from the totems. That's like the whole mechanic. So once you destroy a totem, um, the league mechanic gets a lot easier and it's kind of like a snowball effect, um, as long as you're not getting hit by anything. And then right here, I'm just gonna channel this totem while my teammates are keeping the other people busy. Here's my flanker beast right here, kind of helping me out a little bit. And as you can see here on the mini map, the overlay, the enemy only has three totems left. Um, this big totem typically spawns like the big unique boss um, that we fight. So as, if you can kill this totem pretty like early or maybe like, you know, pretty fast, uh, you will definitely just win the match really fast. See, that wasn't too hard. It's very straightforward. That's personally how I like to uh, play the league mechanic. And once you win the mechanic, uh, Navali will give you a reward right here. Basically like what was on your chest and you're going to get the favors right here. So as you can see here, we have 250 Navali favors now, uh, 750 Hinakura favors. Uh, 500 Ramco favors and 250 Tukuhama favors, right? So let's just go back to the Hall of the Ancestors. And the nice thing is, you can see above the Ancestor the favorite that you have with them, right? So let's just check Akuna out, right? So you just click View Favors, and then you have 500 points. You can buy whatever you want. You can buy this equipment. So this is a good place to talk about equipments. Uh, equipments, everybody sells different equipments. For this example, uh, Sniper's Gambit equipment, 15% increase attack speed per enemy in close range. So this is really good for somebody that's like a beast maybe, or maybe like a melee unit. So I'm just going to head and, you know, you just buy the equipment like that. And once you buy the equipment, you can place it in their in anybody's uh, equipment slot, right? I know the Honored Warrior engages in melee combat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this equipment in his slot. So basically, the more enemies near him, the, the faster he's going to attack. So I think that's a pretty cool upgrade. 
for the warrior. Um, and then you just kind of go to Navali here. She has 250 favor. I don't think that's really enough to buy anything. Oh, wait. Okay. So another thing I like to do is I think the more units I have on my totems, the better it is, right? Because the more presence you have on the battlefield. So I just like to just buy whatever I can and just like kind of build up my roster that way. So that way, like I have more like meat on the field, right? So I can like do what I need to do um, to kind of win the match, right? And then let's try to find the other favorites that we uh, won. So right here we have uh, 250 Akoya favor and then Jade deb see, deb debilitates enemies for a second on hit. This is really strong in my opinion. So I'm going to buy this. And then I'm going to put this on the Tide Caller because the Tide Caller sends out like a big mat like tidal wave. And, you know, every enemy she hits, she de debilitates it enemies for four seconds on hit. That's actually kind of insane to me, right? And I'm sure there's really insane combos out there too. So basically, idols are something you can um, place near the totems at the start of combat. And basically, you have to physically left click them in combat to kind of use them. And then this right here, cooldown recovery rate sounds pretty good. So we can find somebody that has like a special like skill that they use, you know? So buffs with onslaught. So basically, we can have like permanent onslaught if we wanted to. So let's see here. So this unit right here ensnares enemies. So maybe cooldown recovery rate on the spear fisherman would be spearfish, spearfisher would be really good. I don't know why I called it spear fisherman. And yeah, that's it. So basically now we're kind of geared up. We can now try to do the next round. Um, reward wise, I haven't really seen anything impressive yet, but maybe I just haven't done the league mechanic uh, enough. Um, these tattoos are pretty nice. 5% increased global accuracy rating. Hinder enemies with spells on her and just two chaos. Like, that's that's kind of cool, you know? So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the 2C option, and we're fighting Tana Huku. And it looks like, um, you know, there's, like, this option that you see, like, eliminated on next loss. I'm not sure if there's any benefit yet um, to just kind of making them survive into the next uh, round. Maybe their rewards will, like, build up um, as you, you know, as you, make, as you don't eliminate them. Like, maybe they'll get stronger or something like that, right? So, you know, Honored Warrior, I'm just going to put him as a flanker too. And I'm just going to start the match. You know, these matches are pretty much straightforward. We're just going to do another one real quick. Another important thing is, guys, if you get hit while channeling a totem, um, you will you will not be able to move for five seconds. So you want to make sure, like, you, you keep moving. And as you can see here, we kind of just broke them here. They only have three totems up. As you can see, I got hit here. Death Girl, you cannot perform actions that result in taking damage. So when you're channeling a totem, you want to make sure you're not getting hit. It will be very detrimental to your life. And as you can see here, I have so many warriors here. It doesn't even matter, guys, you know? Easy, easy victory, guys. So I think that's, like, the general strategy right now. I think it's a pretty straightforward league mechanic. I don't think uh, there's anything really big to it, to be honest. So, And there you have it, guys. A small look at the Trials of the Ancestors League mechanic. I think it's a pretty fun mechanic. Let me know what you think. And also, if you find this video informational and you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you aren't subscribed already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be releasing more guides, and we're going to be doing some really cool content this week. So if you don't want to miss any of the action, please uh, make sure you're subscribed. And also, just a reminder, I plan on streaming on Twitch every day. Um, basically on weekends, I'm going to be logging in at like 2, 3 p.m. Central Time. And we're going to be pretty much be going all day and all night because I'm just playing PoE and that's what I love to do. On the weekdays, I'm usually going to be on at 8 p.m. Central. I'm going to have a link down below to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash no minds. And yeah, just, you know, stop by. If you have any questions about the league mechanic, just feel free to drop by and ask me. I'll be more than happy to help you. Also, if you have any Path of Exile related mechanical questions or anything like that at all, I'm more than happy to help. Just, you know, just stop by in my stream and, you know, just ask me the question. And I'll be more than happy to help you. And that's it for me, guys. No mind signing out. Thank you so much for watching the video. Have a good one.